Hey guys, welcome back to a Sunday edition of the Chuck Load of Comics show. It's our week in review show. I was kind of nervous. There weren't a lot of cool nerd news stories that dropped this week until Friday. Uh, Mana from heaven. The nerd news dropped like it's nobody's business, guys. We're going to break it all down for you. Uh, if this is your first time to the channel, guys, welcome to Chuck Load of Comics. Take a second. Click that subscribe button. Uh, we break down the week's nerdy news every single Sunday right here on YouTube. It's like headline news for geeks and for fans, for people like you, for people like us, for people like Sean over there. That's right. Basically just breaking down all the fun, the fun headlines. Not the political crap. Right. Not the debates. <laughs> not, none, none, of the, none of that boring news. This is the fun news for man children like ourselves. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, lots of great nerd news dropped. Guys, Batman, we had our first look at the Matt Reeves Batman starring Robert Pattinson. We're going to break down all the Easter eggs. It was okay. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give you the kind of sort of the breakdown. What my thoughts are. Did it blow me away? Not really, but stick around and, and uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Stranger Things season four on yeah. Friday. We got our first one minute teaser trailer for the show that doesn't come out for a very long time, <laughs> but it's nice to get a look at it. So we're going to break down that Stranger Things season four teaser trailer. And finally, on Saturday or Friday night, we got our first look at He Man. Uh, we got some posters we're going to break down for you, the new Kevin Smith He-Man show, and a laundry list of voice actors. It's like all, it's the who's who in the world of nerddom are, uh, are giving their voice to the new He-Man series. We're going to break it all down for you. Uh, before we get into all that stuff, guys, just a reminder, if you're coming to C2E2, come find the Chuck Load of Comics show. We're broadcasting from Podcast Central. You see the logo behind me. Uh, Podcast Central is our baby. It was our brainchild. We've got 25 podcasters coming from all over the country to broadcast from our studio on the show floor at C2E2. We're going to be located at booth 1677. With the Chumpcast. With the Chumpcast. Our best buds, the Chumpcast, providing their awesome talents and their their podcasting skills. I know very little about podcasting. <laughs> I know more about YouTubing and, and video creation. Well, we've got some podcast experts that are going to make this thing go with, uh, it's going to go off uh, like without a hitch. Without a hitch. <laughs> it's going to be great, guys. So if you're coming to C2E2, if you're going to be in the Chicago area, come find us, booth 1677. We're going to be located just beneath Artist Alley. Woohoo! So right by Scotty Young's uh, booth. That's where you're going to find the Chuckload of Comics, Chumpcast Podcast Central. So come find us. Come by and say hi. It's it's coming up in about 14 days. Woohoo! I think that's like a fifth woohoo I've heard from you over there, Shauna. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so, guys. We had a lot of nerd news we're going to break down for you this week, so without further ado, here's the week's headlines in the segment we call Nerd News. Check it out. All right, guys, first big nerd news story of the week. This one sent shockwaves, uh, not only in the DC fan community, but just the entire nerddom fan community. Uh, we got our first look, a screen test. They're calling it a screen test for the Matt Reeves. Uh, Batman starring Robert Pattinson. We finally get to see what Robert Pattinson's going to look like in the bat suit. More importantly, what the bat suit's going to look like um, on, on its Robert own Pattinson. on yeah. Robert Pattinson. You don't see a lot of Robert Pattinson. You just see his chiseled jawline. That's, That's right. about it. Um, it was okay. I thought it was pretty cool. It was pretty neat. Um, yeah. It didn't knock my socks off. That's true, but I mean, it was a, it was just a screen test. So, yeah, supposedly. So they call it a screen test. Yeah. Like it wasn't a screen test, like that Joker thing it was a screen test. Right. That was dope. And if you remember the like. The first time we saw Ben Affleck uh -huh. in his bat suit, that knocked my socks off. Right, this, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was like a Batman like we've never seen before. This is like a Batman we've already kind of seen before. Yeah, I so. Guess so. Didn't knock my socks off, but there were some really cool little Easter eggs that were in there. We're going to break those down for you. You've probably already seen them on social media yeah. and on the internet. So what is it? It was just this short little like 20 second thing. It's all in red. It pans up. Um, it goes from total black. It's like mm -hmm. black for multiple seconds. And then it cuts to like sort of the chest piece and then it goes up and you get to see Robert Pattinson in the cowl. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the suit itself. Yeah. Really mechanical looking. It's 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 almost like military grade. Yeah, we we did this grayscale picture, and you can actually see the detail even better on that. I think a lot more body armor than what we've seen yeah. than, than like you know plasticine muscles, and mm -hmm. um, it's probably the most. It's it's very reminiscent to the uh, Arkham Asylum video game kind oh, of thing, yeah. where he's almost wearing like military grade armor, right? Because you can kind of see like nuts and bolts and yeah. like riveting and stuff in his shoulder pieces. So I think it's going to be a lot more militaristic. Very than what cool. we've seen in other but that's got me a little bit excited yeah that could be kind of neat mm -hmm. um but the real thing that sent shock waves uh <laughs> around the internet some some gun nut some genius <laughs> some trump supporter out there 
gun uh, NRA freak noticed <laughs> this bat symbol yeah. on his chest. And he said, you know what that looks like? That looks like, uh, like the hand grip. To say like a handgun or maybe an assault oh, rifle. If you look like like sort of on the inner wing yeah. before the wings flap out all the way to the edge, sort of mm-hmm. in the, the elbow, shoulder sort of part of the wing. Yeah. It looks like a hand grip. It, it does kind of to a, a gun. And so of course that sent shockwaves. Uh-huh. Because not only is it a gun, somebody said, well, I bet you money this is the gun that killed Bruce Wayne's parents. Oh, yeah. He takes his gun, he cuts it in half, uh-huh. and he makes, he's like, it looks like a bat wing. Interesting. Very interesting. Because it does like look very theory. mechanical, looks very machined uh-huh. metal. Uh, a lot of people are just thinking maybe it's just a batarang that he yeah. wears there for ease of, of grabbing it. It also looks like a batarang, too. Yeah. It also <laughs> looks like a money clip, so yeah. I don't know. Like, right in the middle, it's got this money clip kind of belt thing, right? so maybe it is just a batarang and we're overthinking it, but really, it looks... It looks almost hand grippy. It looks almost yeah. like a piece of a gun. Yes. So why is this important? It's not a very original idea. Oh. This gun thing. If you guys remember uh, Detective Comics 1000, uh, we covered this book when it first came out. Mm-hmm. We, we talked a lot about it. Uh, there was a lots of little stories inside of uh, Detective Comics 1000 written by different writers. Right. The one that was written by Kevin Smith uh-huh. um, was an awesome story. It was my favorite story in that entire book. It sort of tells the story of uh, Bruce Wayne uh, melts down the gun yeah. that killed his parents and he puts it on he makes like a like a body armor plate mm-hmm. that he puts behind the bat symbol interesting so it, it so his parents the gun that killed his parents now acts as a protection for against his for heart. his heart exactly Aww. so poetic so beautiful so <laughs> so you're saying kevin smith probably had an influence on this big bat, time this if this suit, is the yeah. case they they got it from detective comics that's 1000 awesome. specifically kevin smith's yeah. Uh, story in I Detective like Comics. I love it. That's great. I hope that's the case. Yeah. Because uh, why else would they? Because they really showed a close up of it. Yeah. Like why would did. they go so close on that thing if it wasn't an Easter egg? Because it's just the bat symbol on the chest. Right. So I think it's it's almost assuredly going to be that. If it's not, oh well, I'm cool with it too. <laughs> I don't understand why it has a little money clip on the side. But yeah. No, anyway, right. <laughs> I don't know that much about guns. So guys, sign up in the comment section. Let us know what did you think about this. It didn't really wow me. No. It didn't impress me all that much. But hey, I mean, I'll take it. Give me, give me what you can give me. Exactly. I'm excited about the Batman. And the score was great. Oh, let's talk about the score of this thing. <laughs> that did blow me away. Right? It had a very Tim Burton. Um, who's the guy that did the score for the original Batman? No, Danny Elfman. Yeah. Had this real Danny Elfman sound to it. It sounded like the bum, 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 bum. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Big time. I don't know if Danny Elfman's doing the score or not. I don't but it certainly sounds like a Danny Elfman score. So if you haven't watched it, check it out. And let me know what you think about the song. Because that really is going to set the tone for the entire film. Ah, I love it. So, guys, let us know in the comment section, what did you think of the Batman thing? Did it knock your socks off more than it knocked my socks off? And do you think the gun theory holds water, as they say? <laughs> so, guys, next big nerd news story that dropped this week, Stranger Things Season 4 doesn't come out forever. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't come out, to, I don't think, till like October of 2020. What is it with Netflix and like holding on to their shows for so long? Like, you know that the filming's taking place now. They're probably going to be done soon. Why do we have to wait for like two years before we see the next I don't know. Season? It was only been a year for Stranger Things. I think it's coming out in 2020. Okay. But uh, <laughs> they, the, the, the good people over Netflix dropped this one minute teaser, uh-huh. big time teaser, um, of we see the return of Chief Jim Hopper. Yeah. He's back. He's, he's alive. <laughs> he's thin. And he's building a railroad. Right? Out in the middle of <laughs> Siberia. Some Siberian prison camp. Yeah, because they're out they've got guns on them, obviously. And it, yeah, it, it's it's really very cool. Russia. It's because you remember this is the eighties. This is height of the Cold War, man. Oh, it's us versus them, man. This boy. is like old school Russians. This is like the Russians that. that I grew up with. <laughs> right. the, the, the commies. This is the communist Russia. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, obviously it pulls in. It's this big wide shot of a Siberian prison camp. Uh, lots of Ruskies holding AK-47s, mm-hmm. angry dogs, uh, Russians smoking cigarettes and drinking vodka off to the side, just hanging out being <laughs> Russians. Building a railroad. I don't know where they're building this railroad to. Yeah. Or from. Maybe it's to transport their, uh, their captured demigorgon to some place somewhere, I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's just a random uh, railroad. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know either. But so, uh, but then you see Jim Hopper. You turn it. You turn around. You see a bald, very thin Hellboy. Yeah, looking good. Pretty cool. Looking a <laughs> lot less fat. He's gone through a lot of sort of Weight Watchers cycles. 
<laughs> in the four seasons of Stranger Things. We had him like regular Slim and Trim in the first. Yeah. Then he, he started cultivating mass for Hellboy. Right. I was going to say, well, he had to for Hellboy. He started so looking a little like, fat, I think, yeah. in uh, season two, And then three. now, you know, Black Widow, of course, too. So he had to... But he looks kind of hefty in that one, too. Yeah. He looks real thin know. in this. Yeah. Looks, and he's got a bald head. Yeah. Nice shaved head. Right. Uh, you, I think you want hair when you're in Siberia. Yeah, right. For warmth. <laughs> but anyway, really cold. I think they force you to shave your head if you're a prisoner. <laughs> so what I like about it, obviously, is very much a teaser. Uh-huh. No dialogue, no text, not Nothing. even a title at the end that said Stranger Things. Yeah, we just know it's Stranger Things. You know it's Stranger Things because yeah. it said it in the in the description well, of the video. <laughs> but nowhere in it did it say Stranger Things season four. And nowhere in it did it give you any dates or No anything. release dates, yeah. no nothing. No plot details whatsoever. But I like that we're getting out of the Hawkins, Illinois town. Okay. They're yeah, expanding the universe a little bit, man. Like in th- season three, they did drift a little bit out of Hawkins. That's true. I like that we're maybe going to get more um, stuff <laughs> in other parts of the planet. It's probably not going to be that. It's probably going to be like the opening scene in episode one. And, and he's going to he escape. Escapes. He's going to go back <laughs> through a tunnel. and He's going to pop back up in Hawkins. Yeah. And there we're going to spend the entire time with kids because it is the last season. They've oh, announced this is the okay. final season of Stranger Things. The kids are getting old. So you know they're going to end it with a story of the kids and this, this, the town of Hawkins. Of but course. it's nice to get out of Hawkins a little, every now and again. I agree. So, guys, what did you think <laughs> about it? Um, you know, it, it was not underwhelming, but, right. you know, I liked it. I thought it was dope. Let us know in the comment section, guys, what did you think about Stranger Things Season 4 teaser trailer that dropped on Friday? Last nerd news story of the week. Oh, this, this one just favorite. dropped on Friday night. If you follow Kevin Smith on uh, social media, on Instagram, he dropped the entire cast list for all the voiceovers of the new He-Man animated Netflix series. Yes. It reads like a laundry <laughs> list of the celebrity guests at C2E2. Right? It's like every, anybody who's anybody in uh, the world of nerddom and fandom is doing a voice uh, in this. And we're going to break down all the highlights. We can't do them all, right. but we're going to break down uh, sort of the highlights, <laughs> let you know who they're playing, uh, that sort of thing. Before we do, we also got some really cool posters. Yeah. These actually dropped a couple weeks ago. Um, we haven't had a chance to talk about it because I don't know why we didn't. It just kind of went under our radar. Yeah. It kind of shows the animation style right. of which what is... this thing's going to look like. It's going to look nothing like the original He-Man animated no, series. No, which is fine. It's, gonna, it's being uh, sort of marketed as an anime it's going to be the He-Man, the anime series. That's interesting. On Netflix. They actually, they recruited, they hired the same animation company that did the Castlevania Sweet. animated series on um, on Netflix. I don't think it's going to be quite that anime. It's going to be a little bit closer, more reminiscent to like what you see in the Clone Wars. Star Wars, Clone too? Wars, yeah, and the like Rebels. If you, if you look at Skeletor's chin, it's very boxy. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty freaking awesome, man. I'm excited for this. If you look this. at He-Man's sword, <laughs> it looks very uh, sort of angular. Yeah. And box. I think it's going to look dope. I do too. And you know, it's on Netflix. It's going to be catered a little bit more to adults. Yep. We're finally going to see He-Man use his sword as opposed to just pulling out, saying, yeah, I have right. the power, and then just <laughs> putting <laughs> it away. He might actually brain some people yeah. with his sword. We're going to see some actual Conan-esque fights in the He-Man series. I love it. So <laughs> let's get into some of these uh, some of these actors. Oh my god! The this very is first one so is so exciting. perfect. I Mark, know. Mark Hamill as Skeletor. Yes! <laughs> Sean is very excited about that. Oh man, I'm so excited about that. How much you couldn't get more perfect it's than perfect. that. It's perfect. Because I can hear the Joker voice behind Skeletor like talk yes. to, he talks like this. And, perfect. Oh, I'm so excited. That's exactly that what it's gonna sound like. I know. And that's how it should sound. That'll get you a man. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so good. I know. So that one's a no brainer. This next one blew me away. It was Henry Rollins. Yes. Uh Black Flags <laughs> Henry Rollins is gonna be playing Triclops. Henry Rollins is so perfect for a He-Man right? style role because he's such an over actor. Over he's such actor, a great voice actor. Grunts like very rough and tumbly kind of voice. Like, Just those yeah. two had me crazy excited. Nailed it. But then the next one on the list was uh, from Game of Thrones. Lena Headey yes. is going to play Skeletor's right-hand woman, Eva Lynn. Love it. Um, she just can't not play bad I guys know, now. Right? <laughs> she used to play good people. I remember I in like uh, Terminator, uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yeah, yeah. But then once she started playing Game of Thrones, man, now she's instantly and always going to be cast <laughs> as a villainess. But that's awesome. Yeah, she's going to crush it. Great casting. Um, but on the other side of the spectrum, nice people. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yes. Is going to be. She's been cast as the voice of Tila. Good to see her back in the scene. Great to hear Sarah Michelle Gellar returning yes. back to the scene, directed by Kevin Smith. And another wonderful, wonderful woman who we have met, uh, Miss Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, also good to see her back on the scene. Yes, uh, she's going to be back playing Queen Marlena. Mm-hmm. 
Very awesome, Alicia Silverstone. It's going to be fun just watching this series and listening for the voices. Especially, it's going to be so great. I'm so excited. And speaking of voices, guys, the most nerdy, most famous voice of all time playing the character of Merman is (laughs) Batman, the animated series himself, Kevin Conroy. Oh my gosh, how perfect is that? The voice of Bruce Wayne in the 90s Batman animated series. Kevin Conroy is going to be playing Merman. Kind of hoped he would have played He Man and Prince Adam. But it's so cool to have two um, Batman animated series voices on the show. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Mark Hamill. Yeah. You got Joker and Batman. Yeah. I liked how in Kevin Smith's uh, social media, he said, I got two Batman. I got, uh, uh, what do you say? I got a Joker and I got Buffy. Nice. (laughs) That's that's awesome. And you got the girl from Clueless. Yeah, right. Well, she was technically Batgirl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, What the hell? I know. Kevin, (laughs) deep deep cuts in the DC universe. Right? (laughs) Uh, Next one, I love Uh, this. I was wondering who was going to play Orko. Yeah. And it is none other than uh, Netflix alum from The Tick, Griffin Newman. Yes. He played Arthur in the Netflix series The Tick. If you haven't started watching that. It's actually an Amazon series. Oh, crap. It's an Amazon (laughs) series. It is? Yeah. Darn it. That's okay, though. Anyway, you should watch The Tick on Amazon. It's awesome. So I was wondering who's going to play Orko. Orko's obviously that classic He-Man character. Little little midget dude with a hat, and you see his eyes. And yep. stuff. That's going to be so cool to see Orko. That's great. But the one that just absolutely knocked my socks off, I wasn't even expecting <laughs> an announcement of who was going to do the voice of Cringer, but it's Steven Root. Yes! You know him from Dodgeball, <laughs> from Barry, from freaking Office Space. From Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh, uh, yeah. News Radio. Yeah, my gosh. It's Steven everything. Root is the voice of the timid and shy little cat. How perfect is that? I know. That is like amazing casting right there. Kevin Smith, you did the Lord's work in this group of people that you've got. And we didn't even mention half of them. Like, Jason Mewes is going to be playing Stinker, yeah. I think is his name. Uh, Harley Quinn Smith, of Harley course. Harley Quinn Smith has got a, a character. Uh, uh, Justin Long is oh, going to yeah. be in it. <laughs> The law, it's, it's like 30 names that he rifled yeah. up. We couldn't do them all. These are just kind of our, our top picks. For sure. So, holy crumbs. Find Kevin Smith on uh, social media. Find this entire list. It's nuts. There's no release date set for He Man yet on Netflix. I'm excited. Probably looking at 2021. Yeah. Uh, they did, they've, the reason he posted this is because they shot all six episodes. Oh, so, really? they, they've done the voiceover for the entire six episode first season. So, now they just got to animate it. Oh. It's only six episodes long? Yeah, I think uh, so. Well, okay. he said we did the first six. I'm assuming uh, okay. they got them all in, in and just did the entire series. Yeah, that's true. So, that makes sense. So <gasps> They still got a lot of animating to do, so you're probably not going to see this thing until 2021, but get that's excited. Fine. I'm insanely excited. Me too, and thank you, Kevin Smith, for sharing that because you made my weekend. <laughs> yes. Shauna, most, most, most excited character? Um, I think it's got to be Mark Hamill, man, as Skeletor. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I got to go Steven Root as Cringer or Henry okay. Rollins as Triclops. Yeah, they're just too many. And I love the the female cast he pulled out. That yeah. was fantastic, too. And I do want to hear Jason Mewes and uh, and yeah. uh, Harley Quinn. That's a good point. I just, they're all so great. I know. So, guys, let us know in the comment section, what do you think about this cast? Of a voiceover characters, what do you think about the animation style? Are you excited about He-Man? Are you a He-Man fan? Is this going to make you a He-Man fan? Let us know in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. So that's our whole show, guys. What a week in the world of nerddom. Just to recap, if you're gonna be at C2E2, if you're coming, to, if you're gonna be in the Chicago area in 12 days, come find us at Podcast Central on the show floor. We're broadcasting Chuckload of Comics all weekend long with 25 other YouTubers and podcasters. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So. Find us at C2E2 in a couple weeks. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching Chuck Load of Comics. We're here every single Sunday, breaking down the nerd news of the week, the headline news, all the fun stuff. We break it down every Sunday right here on YouTube. I'm rambling. So, <laughs> go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Have a fantastic week. See you here next time. Bye-bye.